hello viewers welcome to this episode of healthy india and today we are going to discuss something that interests all of you we are going to talk about diets there are so many diets floating around what is good for us what is not good for us what is the science behind these diets and we'll have experts from across the country help you answer those questions we have dr shilpa joshi from bombay who is vice president of the indian dietetic association and secretary of the all india association for research in obesity so she works with the dietetic association as well as with the obesity association uh, welcome shilpa to the show and we have uh, uh, ritika samadhar who works with us at max healthcare heads the dietetic section for for this region and also is the joint secretary of the indian dietetic association new delhi and we have dr shilpa thakur who's a consultant in dietetics at the asian hospital uh, and is a general secretary of the indian dietetic association delhi and we actually have a, that means a very solid representation from the main body of dietitians in this country that is the indian dietetic association welcome all of you to the show i'll start with dr uh, shilpa joshi first and you know one of the most popular diets these days is the intermittent fasting diet and we know that intermittent fasting is prescribed has been prescribed for centuries for millennia actually even buddha said to his disciples don't eat after sunset look how fit i am don't eat after sunset every religion uh, uh, prescribes intermittent fasting in different forms some do it twice a week you know you reduce your calories five days you eat different some do it extended 25 days or 30 days consecutively some do it once a week so that some don't eat after sunset so fasting is part of our culture religion whichever religion you follow so so the fact is that that has not translated into a fashionable thing called intermittent fasting so shilpa you want to take that up what is intermittent fasting uh, so uh, what like, like what you said rightly that the the uh, the essence of in, the intermittent fasting is there are periods of eating and there are periods of starvation and like you said there are many kinds of intermittent fasting so you eat for 5 days don't eat for 2 days uh, you know you eat alternate day but the most popular one i think which is uh, which is very popular in my state yes, so more than it is yes is a uh, time restricted feeding now in time restricted feeding what happens is you have a eating window of about 8 hours and then you have a fasting window of 16 hours now this comes with a hope that when there is a longer fasting window the 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 idea is that there is a metabolic switch in your body so you typically use glucose for uh, sustenance and when the glucose decreases then you start channelizing your fat and converting into something called as ketone bodies and you start utilizing that and hence it causes weight loss so basically the most popular one nowadays doing rounds everywhere especially in maharashtra is time restricted feeding so so when we say time restricted feeding it means 16 hours there's nothing that you can take yes. except some calorie free beverages i suppose yes so water green tea you know something which is basically water maybe flavored by something which is calorie free and what about the 8 hours what do you eat in those 8 hours so that's that's what i wanted to talk but i thought i'll wait for you to ask yes, yes. so the uh, you know uh, when the lockdown began uh, i started online practice and lot of people came to me for intermittent fasting because they were sitting at home right and they were in front of their computers and working and what happened is they found that you know that that might work better interestingly what i found is whether you continuously i mean do continuous calorie restriction or intermittent fasting there is no difference but what people do is they fast for 16 hours and in 8 hours they wait to eat and they find everything available on that planet to eat in those 8 hours that's the problem i know so many people who say me samosa kharid ke launga gulab jam launga well keep it 16 ghante hone ke baad i'll eat and then nothing happens i mean you will agree with me that after that if you start eating such calorie dense food 
it doesn't work. But that's what is the trend that they wait for 16 hours and then eat ad libitum, as it is called. So uh, we have both kinds of examples, Shilpa. We are clearly have people who think the way uh, that you're describing, but there are others who over a period of time actually uh, reduce their appetite pretty significantly and they're able to manage with lesser food. So I guess it's important for people to understand that in the eight hours that you eat in intermittent fasting, you can have you can you can have things that you enjoy, but you can't go overboard. You cannot have energy dense food, calorie. I mean things that are overtly are not all right. And if you do that, then you lose out on the benefit of intermittent fasting. The, the yeah the second point it's here really is called, moderation. Yes, moderation is the key. So while you need not be only on salads in the eight hours that you are eating, you can have normal food. But if you have food that we know is unhealthy, then obviously you will offset the advantage that you have. The other point in this is about what time, what is the period, 16 years? Is everything the same or is it better to miss breakfast, better to miss dinner? Uh, what do you advise your patients? So I actually, like you rightly said in the introduction, it's all about personalization. It's about, you know, some people are more comfortable not eating breakfast and some people are not so comfortable in eating dinner. My basic idea is if you can eat dinner early, and you can have something a little early on. So instead of having a one o'clock lunch, probably you can have it by 11 o'clock, but eat your dinner really early, around seven o'clock. But that was possible when people are sitting at home and working from home. In Mumbai, you leave office at five and don't reach home before nine. So I don't know if that's going to work, but uh, typically the advice is you eat dinner early and then you 16 hours later, you can, I mean, you can eat, a, eat food. That works better, I feel. Yes, I think that mimics the body clock much better. Yeah. The idea is to have a no dinner or very light dinner. But in actual practice, what Shilpa is saying is absolutely right. People are happier giving up breakfast sometimes, which is a poor second choice. You can do that. That is also intermittent fasting if you're completely giving up breakfast. But then that is not the best way. The body clock is aligned in a way that you should eat in the morning at, at lunch and then early dinner so that you have 16 hours between dinner and breakfast, that would be the ideal way to do this. I think this is important. It, all studies, however, have so far shown that when you compare for weight loss, intermittent fasting versus traditional uh, mechanisms of continuous calorie restriction, as Shipa was saying, if you do a, to a, to a parallel controlled study, you will find that the results are almost similar. It's not that different. So it depends on the person. There are people who can do continuous calorie restriction, but there are some who cannot do that and would much rather do IF, intermittent fasting. So we have to see based on patient preference and not necessarily you know, uh, say that intermittent fasting is a panacea for everything and is going to really dramatically cause weight loss. There are other aspects to intermittent fasting. There is some uh, work on cell apoptosis and others. In, 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 in animals, there is interesting work on increasing lifespan, actually, uh, less reducing aging. So there are lots of interesting areas, including, I mean, there are studies that have even shown thinking and memory and heart function. So those are those are being researched, and but very interesting areas. At the moment, when we're talking of weight reduction, then it's equivalent to con continuous calorie restriction, and it just really depends on how you do it. One of the things is, uh, one of the things is that when we do a continuous restriction of a low calorie diet, our body metabolism tends to adjust to that very quickly in a few weeks. Whereas with intermittent fasting that because you're doing a switch every day, you perhaps, the theory is that you don't, the body doesn't adjust. You see, for example, if you go on a low calorie diet, same diet, you'll not be able to lose weight after some time. You, you, you know, because, but it is thought that because in intermittent fasting, there is a switch, the effect might continue, but you know, clinical trials haven't proven its major superiority over continuous uh, calorie restriction. Uh, fantastic. I think these are very, very important points. Uh, I think this is uh, uh, exceedingly important for us to understand and we've covered a lot of ground, although uh, we still have lots to learn. And I move to Ritika now. And Ritika, can you uh, talk a little bit? We'll have to carry keto diets in this second segment also, but at least introduce the concept of keto diets because something akin to what Dr. Shilpa said about eating less carbs and therefore you start breakdown of fats. What about keto diets? 
So uh, typically when we talk about keto diet, when we define a keto diet is obviously it's very, very high on fats. It's moderate on proteins and very low on carbohydrates. Now, basically how it works, what is the mechanism or what's the science behind it? Uh, whenever we are eating food, so we need glucose. That is the requirement of the cell for working 24 into 7. So we need a constant supply of glucose. So the best available source for glucose for us is, of course, the carbohydrates. Now, when the body gets depleted of carbohydrates, and sadly, we do not have much store of carbohydrates. So the initial three, four hours, we have enough stores as glycogen in the liver. So there is a certain amount of glucose which is supplied by the liver. Thereafter, there is a little bit breakdown from the muscles, and then, you know, we get a little bit of energy. But thereafter, say, I think in three to four days' time, if you're following this pattern, the body has to look for an alternative source for energy. And that is where your stored fat becomes the ideal source for energy. So the body still continues to work. But in addition, what it is doing is it is breaking down your own fats which are stored in the body. So this is this concept which uh, Shilpa just discussed. It's exactly the same. So the body is breaking down the fats and the ketone bodies are being produced, which is the source of energy. And that's how the term, the ketogenic diet, so the keto diets. Uh, the only thing is, of course, uh, we've come a long way from the traditional keto diet. So there are these modified keto diets. And I think during our discussion, we'll discuss about that, what is a true authentic keto diet? And initially, in fact, when it was initially started in, in 1920s, and it was basically done for the treatment of epileptic children. And that is, again, for the basic reason that no carbohydrates, extreme carbohydrate restriction to the extent of only about 25 to 40, 50 grams of carbohydrates, and the body were getting into ketone, uh, producing a lot of ketones, and hence the reduction in the seizures. But also what they saw was that it can be, if you modify it or probably make it a little more liberal, there would be a uh, benefit of weight loss also. And hence this concept of you from a purely therapeutic use to probably getting into a weight loss uh, diet also became very, very popular. And yes, it's very, very popular now also. Uh, I'll also like to add, it's not only restricted for weight loss, but also because uh, as we were discussing, the moment the body reduces on the glucose, there is obviously uh, the insulin resistance, which of course I'm sure we're going to discuss about, is the prime to probably most of the chronic diseases which we talk about, be it diabetes, be it your dyslipidemics, so therefore, uh, or your polycystic ovaries, etc. So there is, of course, a drastic reduction in the insulin levels in the blood, and probably that is the mechanism which is also helping not only in probably weight loss, but also to a certain extent in controlling the diabetes or probably having, uh, you know, reductions in your, uh, this lipidic, uh, your lipid profiles, etc. So I think, Ritika, you've explained that excellently. Uh, the under concept of a keto diet, both by the fact that a fat starts burning down if we starve the body of carbohydrate and some ketone bodies are produced and the brain, which can use glucose, can also use ketone bodies as fuel. And they cross the blood-brain barrier and our brain does get fuel from ketone bodies. So you have to produce a small amount of ketones and that's what this diet is supposed to do because excessive ketone production can be harmful for the body. And very rightly, the impact on insulin and glucose is, is, a, is an important aspect of this. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with details about keto diet. Thank you, Shilpa Thakur, for hanging in there. We're going to involve you in a lot of discussion in the, in the second half. Uh, short break and we'll be back soon. बात जो आप जानना चाहें बात जो आप सुनना चाहें लोकतंत्र से जुड़ी हर वो खबर जिसका सरोकार होता है आपसे लोकतंत्र राउंडअप वेलकम बैक आफ्टर द ब्रेक एज वी कंटिन्यू आर डिस्कशन ऑन पॉपुलर डाइट्स एंड वी वर इन द मिडल ऑफ डिस्कसिंग कीटो डाइट्स सो यू नो व्हाट यू सेड रितिका इज क्वाइट स्ट्राइकिंग यू आर टॉकिंग आर व्यूअर्स आर सरप्राइज दैट यू आर टॉकिंग ऑफ अ डाइट दैट हैज 55 60% फैट and very low protein and everyone is worried you know after all what's going to happen to me 
if i'm going to take that low protein and how do how does this diet balance out for nutritional requirements so um, as the uh, the true authentic keto diet we talk about almost 70 to 80% of the total calories coming from the fat uh, at least 10% to 12% coming from your proteins and then of course the remaining which is depending upon how strict you want to go it can be ranging from 2% to 10% as carbohydrates so we need to understand the balance now as i said this was of course a diet which is specifically meant for a therapeutic conditions uh when we talk about the type of fat it is very very important to talk about the quality of fat so when this diet was formed we obviously when we are talking about a very high amount of fat we have to look into the quality of fat so yes there is a lot of talk about the quality of fat in terms of the polyunsaturated talking about olives avocados your monounsaturated fats and all but what actually happens is when we actually disseminate this to the community or when the community starts following this diet probably they do not understand that the quality of fat is equally important and obviously if you start taking too much of these so called the saturated fats or the trans fats or too much of fried foods which usually people do then definitely yes it would lead to other kinds of issues which is like heart problems or the other uh, problems ailments which are associated with taking high fat diet in terms of proteins again it is very important to understand that when we talk about proteins uh, remember the the vegetarian proteins are also a very very good source of carbohydrates so when we are talking about a true authentic keto diet we usually depend on the lean proteins or the a class proteins or the animal proteins so usually that is the basic concern which we find when we follow a keto diet in india remember in india we have almost 70% of the population which is a vegetarian population so you know when clients come and say that you want to follow a keto diet it is next to impossible if you want to follow a true authentic keto diet with a vegetarian diet because remember whenever we are talking about proteins whether it's the dals or the or your whole grains which give you the proteins it is also giving equal amount of carbohydrates so then the amount of carbohydrate ex- uh, you know exceeds the recommended amount so it's a very very fine line and of course a trained nutritionist would be able to help in following a true authentic keto diet does have a lot of benefits so yes we did talk about weight loss which is very very important and primary helps in insulin um, uh, you know uh, the uh, prevention of the insulin resistance uh, so therefore that helps in lot of other ailments like pcods and probably a newly onset diabetes can be reversed to a certain extent also has if you are consuming good amounts of healthy fats probably you will be able to get your fat soluble vitamins but on the other side yes there are lots of cons and that is where it is very important that when we talk about these diets we need to discuss both the pros and the cons so yes because of restricted carbohydrates because there are not much of fruits and vegetables in the diet the uh, there would be definitely a deficiency of the vitamins in the long term for sure second if the proteins as i discuss are not being monitored on a day to day basis there would be a deficiencies of proteins also in the diet and of course we do have the short term and the long term effects in terms of the various symptoms which the patients come back to us but if followed in the correct way monitored probably can be followed for a certain period of time and usually the period is about 3 2 to 3 months at a stretch i think important points there keto diet is cannot be followed indefinitely we don't recommend it typically beyond 3 months patients also sort of lose patience with it uh, after this time and and uh, the, uh, the efficacy has been shown in short term trials there is long term data of up to 10% weight loss at one year but people do tend to give up keto diet for 3 months some studies up to 6 months but not more than that ever so and it is a challenge and you know we know that some people get nausea vomiting headache as ritika was briefly mentioning something we call keto flu some of them get brain fog you know so so there are a lot of things with keto diet so again you have to check with your doctor are you a candidate for keto diets keto diets don't work for everybody and i'll go back to shilpa with a question both for intermittent fasting and keto diets who are the people who should stay away you know who should not venture into into these diets and they should understand that is not let's say intermittent fasting who are the people who should not be following intermittent fasting so i think people who should not be following intermittent fasting are people who have comorbidities with weight with obesity so they have obesity with say and also type 2 diabetes or heart issue especially type 2 diabetes because they are taking medications or insulin at a particular time and lot of them 
just start following intermittent fasting. Do not consult their doctor. Do not get their medications changed or timings changed. And I think that's something uh, which should not be, uh, you know, individuals with such comorbidities should not be doing intermittent fasting. Right. Uh, same about keto. I mean, I guess people who are having, uh, you know, for example, uh, re kidney conditions, yes. liver conditions, uh, people with diabetes who are on multiple medications. There are some kind of people with diabetes who can follow intermittent fasting, early diabetes, pre-diabetes, people on just metformin, sometimes on metformin plus liptin, but I think it ends there. For me to go to more complex regimens where you have sulfonylurea, insulin, etc., it's, it's intermittent fasting is a no-no. And I guess the same applies for keto diets. For me, the biggest concern with keto diets has been absence of fruit, uh, because I think that's really important for our minerals. And so you have to make sure that you're getting that from either through pills or some other source. So that's, that's one challenge. Uh, and also, of course, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, when you have that much fat in the diet, it'll also reduce your appetite. So over a period of time, people who are on keto diets also, after the initial slight sickness phase, they actually, uh, their appetite goes down with that much fat. So you, you know, you, you can have too much of something that you even like. If you like to have fat, even then you'll start feeling sick. But the importance of good fats cannot be overemphasized. So if you stuff yourself up with trans fats and you know saturated fats all the time, that's not a good idea. That's not the way a keto diet is supposed to be practiced. And I think we need to uh, be, be aware of that and not just jump into a fancy diet because my neighbor or my friend or my uncle or my nephew just said, this is the way to go about it, man. Just go for it. So, sabki sun ke baad sirf aap aisi diets jaise intermittent fasting hai ya keto diet hai, usko nahi apnaye. Please, agar aapko in diets ke baare mein kisi ne bataya hai, zarur padhe aur apne doctor ya ek certified nutritionist dietitian se salah lehen कि आपके लिए वो डाइट ठीक है कि नहीं है और अगर करें तो पूरा ठीक से करें कई लोग आधा आधा ये आधा वो मिक्स कर देते हैं उस पे फिर कुछ भी फायदा नहीं होता तो ये जरूरी है कि डाइट्स को हम लोग अच्छे से समझें तो कीटो डाइट इज एक्चुअली यस शिल्पा प्लीज आई जस्ट वांटेड टू ऐड वन पॉइंट यस कीटो डाइट इज अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक रेजिम एंड वी शुड गो टू अ डाइटिशियन हु डस कीटो डाइट यस अमंग डाइटिशियंस all dietitians don't do keto diets yes and so if you are if at all you are venturing that territory then please go to the person who knows what that person is doing with keto diet so please go to a qualified person for taking keto diet absolutely diets. so i think the challenge that our patients face is that these days everyone is selling something so that's a challenge so so those who are nutritionists also so called nutritionists not the really certified ones those who believe in keto diets will just go on talking keto diet keto diet and that's the answer for everybody i think we need to be rational balanced in that and then we can use these diets to our benefit in the right patient in the right person at the right time you know i think that's important so we we basically in keto diets one fundamental thing is low carbohydrate that's what drives the fat breakdown but the keto diet is unique because it gives more fat a more popular version is to have high protein and and that is the famous atkins diet the paleo diet uh, so many diets which focus on high protein diet so low carbohydrate and high protein diets is the other thing that that is very relevant and very popular and i'll ask shilpa thakur about that what do you think about low well mainly high protein diets we were discussing about the intermittent fasting and many people follow intermittent fasting and paleo diet together also in the eight hours window the paleo diet is being so paleo diet is nothing but a high protein diet so that the name uh, says high protein means wherein we are having high protein foods been including into the diet so it actually fewer uh, adds on to fewer carbohydrates and the fewer fats as compared to the other diets we have been discussing so it helps to weight loss boost up our energy also um, we have lots of we know that uh, protein is an essential micronutrient when we talk about the diet so high protein diet is basically they have been lately been started in 1970s with uh, these different types of diet and they actually concentrated on more than 43% been coming from the protein or as high as 20% or 30% been included into the diet 
Some researchers suggested that high protein can really help into losing weight. From there, the concept of these high protein diets we started on with, because protein gives us more satiety. So we have less of hunger, the, there is decrease into the hunger pangs, it boosts up the metabolic rate, and it helps into preserving of the muscle mass. So high protein diet came into existence from there. And uh, as the diet name says, we are higher on to lean proteins, lean meats, beans, soya, nuts, seeds, and all. And we are high on to uh, low GI uh, fruits and vegetables. And the vegetables which are like low into GI or the whole grains, they are being part of the high protein diet. And the refined carbohydrates, um, the breads and the wheat, uh, pastas and all the sugars, simple sugars, and added sugars or the candied things, the saturated fats, they are the things which are to be avoided into high protein diets. So, so uh, basically all diets that are being recommended now with modern research are actually at some level low in refined carbohydrate. I don't think that's, there's any controversy about that part. What you replace it with is a different story. But refined carbohydrate has to go. And whatever carbohydrate we do have should be of the complex carbohydrate variety with a lot of fiber and maybe through fruits and vegetables and other sources. Or, or even if you have your atta or whatever, it has to be mixed with uh, fiber and a lot of grains. Because if you have a typical white chapati, roti, or, a, or white, shiny white rice, it's very, very high glycemic index, gets absorbed fast. And that's more or less refined carbohydrate, all your cakes, pastries, you know, even though it's not necessarily mithai, not necessarily sweet, yeah. you still have a lot of refined carbohydrates in Indian, urban Indian diets. And that's been the main change in that diet over the last few years. So low carbohydrate and high protein diets work for some people. They don't always work for everybody. And there's also a challenge sometimes in India to have enough high protein, especially if someone is vegetarian. Yes. You have a vegetarian diet, which is uh, truly an Atkins or a paleo diet can be a challenge. Have you seen side effects, uh, uh, Shilpa Thakur, with, with uh, these high protein diets? Yes, some, uh, there are uh, challenges with the following up also, because uh, as you rightly said, many of them, uh, we are like more of following vegetarian diets. So sometimes not able to cope up with uh, the nutritional deficiencies which come from that we are not including much fiber because sometimes we are not able to, because we encourage in eating more of high protein snack also. We teach about snacking sensibly. Proteins are always been kept first prior importance in all the major meals. So sometimes because of full satiety and all, we're not able to grab up on the portion size of the whole grains or the fibers or the vegetables also. So lesser fiber, sometimes nutrient deficiencies occurs. So uh, in even in the race of having more protein, sometimes processed foods are also like the non-vegetarian things are being added up into the diet. So that again, being a kind of a thing which can have a negative effect onto our body. That health benefits. So processed food, especially because they may have more yes. salt, they may have more additives. A lot of salt is used in processed meat yeah, in the West. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. so those are issues. And also some people on, on these high protein diets do complain of, again, some nausea and discomfort and constipation. My patients yes. uh, always complain of constipation when they're on these kind of diets. So, and they're quite unsafe for the chronic diseases also if the person yeah. has already been suffering from some kind of issues. So then it can be uh, like we are having, it might have more load onto the kidneys also. Yes. They're not... So we need to think over, it has to be very much individualized. It, we cannot say that, again, it can work for everyone. Great. And I think that's important. While on the one hand, we always advising our patients to have more protein because Indians have too little protein. Yes. But on the other hand, if you go the other way and you go on a very high protein diet, you need to be very careful. Talk to your doctor. Again, same advice. Talk to a certified nutritionist before you embark on that journey, They're thinking that it's worked for everybody, should work for me. So I'll give you an example. A few years ago, everyone who came to my OPD wanted to do only Atkins diet. Now they used to fight with me. Then it became paleo diet. Then it became something else, then something else. And now everyone is IF or keto, intermittent fasting or keto. So these are fashion. So they don't stay sometimes. Out of these, I do think that the principles behind intermittent fasting and keto diets are, are there especially intermittent fasting, which has been there for centuries. So I suspect that modified versions of that will stay and probably keto diets will also stay to some extent after some modification. Uh, 
I want one line from you, uh, Shilpa, as in Joshi, uh, about anti-inflammatory diets. A lot of my patients come and ask me, anti-inflammatory diets, I, I want to have, a, you know, all our diets promote inflammation and I want an anti-inflammatory diet. What do you say to that? So, um, again, like uh, Shilpa and Ritika and even you were saying that we have a lot of refined foods in our diet and that actually add up to the inflammatory uh, quotient uh, in our health. Also, we live in a very pro-inflammatory state and we have seen that obesity and chronic diseases both are pro-inflammatory conditions. To work around that, the diets which are given are called as anti-inflammatory diets. Anti-inflammatory diets are very particular about the kind of carbohydrates which are used in the diet. So they are not only low glycemic, but they are low glycemic load, not only index, but low glycemic load. And the fats which are used in um, anti-inflammatory diets are predominantly omega-3 fats and not omega-6 fat. Again, you will uh, see that uh, in India, the oils which are used are prominent, predominantly omega-6 rich oils as a choice. So therefore, the diets which give you, uh, so uh, there is a paper which classically says that an anti-inflammatory diet is a one, two, three diet. So for one gram of one uh, gram of fat, you give two grams of protein and three grams of carb. I mean, this is for dietitians. This is not for people in general, but the essence is that it emphasizes a lot on eating vegetables, low glycemic fruits, and very little, although carbohydrate is recommended, very few calories of carbohydrate coming from grains. Define, define. And, okay. uh, you know, like you said rightly, sir, that even though in India we use millets and we use rice, everything that is in the market is refined. So, uh, you know, recently there are papers coming that even the kodo millet and juar and bajra, everything is ultimately decorticated and extremely refined. So we are talking about eating very little amount of cereals, more calories coming from fruit, vegetables, nuts, oil seeds. And when you're using cooking oils, you use predominantly monounsaturated fat kind of oils, you use proteins which come from primarily vegetarian source, because again, uh, non-vegetarian proteins are called to be inflammatory in nature. So use vegan or plant-based proteins. So uh, thank you, Shilpa, for clarifying that. Anti-inflammatory diets are also very important. I guess you need diets which have properties that will help us uh, live healthier, lose weight, uh, live longer. And, uh, you know, anti-inflammation -inflamm is a major uh, component of our chronic disease spectrum, uh, a contributor to our chronic disease uh, spectrum. And I think uh, diets that reduce inflammation will definitely help. And a lot of the things, if you're hearing me correctly, just you're listening to me, there are things that are common. There is a difference. But after a while, it comes to us that we have to keep the meat, refined carbohydrate, बहुत तली हुई चीजें नहीं खानी है ट्रांस फैट्स को अवॉइड करना है फाइबर को ज्यादा खाना है तो ये सब चीजें बेसिक्स हैं जो किसी भी डाइट में बहुत चेंज नहीं होती किसी में प्रोटीन बढ़ाते हैं किसी में अच्छा फैट बढ़ाते हैं और अब हम पहुंचेंगे एक और बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग डाइट के ऊपर व्हिच इज द वेगन डाइट द थर्ड डाइट दैट पीपल वांट टू फॉलो दीस डेज एंड वी विल कम बैक टू द वेगन डाइट आफ्टर द ब्रेक नमस्कार मैं सुमित्रा गुहा जल्दी ही संसद टीवी के बहुत मशहूर प्रोग्राम अभिव्यक्ति में आ रहे हैं जरूर सुनिएगा देखिएगा हेलो व्यूअर्स वेलकम बैक आफ्टर द ब्रेक एंड एज वी कंटिन्यू दिस वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग डिस्कशन 
about the various kinds of diet that people are following. Many of you are following these days. We need to understand a lot more about another kind of diet, which is, again, a very popular plant-based diet, vegan diets. You know, traditionally, some religious groups in the U.S. were vegan, but now vegan diets have penetrated every part of the globe, and there's a lot of research on them, very interesting concepts. I'd ask uh, Ritika Samadhar to explain to us about vegan diets. So, so as you rightly said, this is a diet, a vegan diet, which is actually originated from the West, very, very popular in the West. Uh, but interestingly, in India, as I just said earlier also, that you know, 50 to 60 percent are vegetarian. So more or less, we've been following a vegan diet for a very long time. But when I truly come to a definition of what is the vegan diet, it basically means that you completely are off any kind of a non-vegetarian food. So no animal products, be it your eggs, your chicken, your fish, mutton, etc. No dairy products, so no milk, no ghee, no butter, etc. And also certain foods like honey, etc. because we get it from the bees, is also to be restricted. So that is what defines a vegan diet. Now, in case you see the compositions of a vegan diet, which emphasizes more on uh, the healthy carbohydrates, that is, you're taking your whole grains, it emphasizes a lot on the beans and the dals and the pulses, which, of course, we eat a lot. It emphasizes a lot on the fruits and vegetables. It emphasizes a lot on the healthy fats coming from the vegetarian sources. So uh, all your nuts and seeds are encouraged. So if I see the composition, yes, it is a very, very healthy diet composition, which can be followed for by many. But again, when we talk about any diet, the basic question is, is it sustainable? Is it practical? Are we meeting the requirements of all our micro and the micronutrients or not? So if I talk about the vegan diet, uh, yes, we are getting our fruits and vegetables. So we're getting all our micronutrients, but there are certain mi micronutrients specifically like vitamin D, B12, or for that matter, iron which of course, mostly the sources are like for vitamin D and B12, we know dairy is the richest source. Similarly for iron, the best absorption, absorbable forms is of course the non-vegetarian uh, diets. But again, if followed to the point with of course, in consultation with a dietitian who can actually make a very healthy, balanced vegan diet, this is a diet which can be followed for long. But what we saw, so I would like to share over here, like we recently did a study in our hospital uh, where we saw the effect of the vegan diet on our cardiovascular patients. And of course, we saw excellent results in terms of reductions of total cholesterols, in terms of reduction of triglycerides, even the waist circumference reduced considerably. But what was found at the end of the study was, one, it was not sustainable over a long period of time. Because in India, when we talk about the dairy, the only thing which comes to our mind is milk. Uh, we really don't, uh, you know, get into things like almond milk or the rice milk, which are, of course, the different alternatives. So that was one of the basic hindrances which we found. The other is, of course, um, uh, when we talk about the vegan diet, we really need to balance it out in terms of the protein content, because that is another thing. Uh, people mostly fall back on dairy products, at least in India when they're vegetarian, because there's a lot of consumption of paneer and dahi, etc., which has to be completely avoided in the vegan diet. So meeting the protein requirements is a big concern. Meeting certain micronutrients, which I said, is a concern. And of course, long-term sustainability does become a little uh, problematic. But yes, again, we have a, word, a modified version of the uh, vegan diet where, you know, a, a little bit of milk is allowed in the tea or if they want to have a little dahi, that's allowed. But I would say at the end of it that, yes, a vegan diet, if followed in the correct manner, is a very, very healthy diet. And there are a lot of research to prove that it does have remarkable uh, changes in uh, you know, lipid profiles and diabetes patients and, of course, weight loss also. Thank you, Ritika. But the challenge that I face in patients who are, who are following a vegan diets is, number one, you already highlighted some of them, right? Protein. As, as we already said, Indian diets are lacking in protein. In the West, it's almost all made up by soya and soya milk diets. Now, Indians are not necessarily so fond of soya. The other thing that some people don't know, that while soya is a good source of protein, uh, it's not a great, that good a source of calcium. So actually, the milk, soya milk available in the West is calcium fortified soya milk to give it all the property. Similarly, there are lots of B12 fortified food in the West, there's iron-fortified food. So you can get your minerals 
and your especially your calcium which bothers me a lot because you know one of my areas of interest is bone health uh, and uh, the other minerals which will become deficient if you follow a vegan diet in india indefinitely because or you have to pop pills for that so it's very difficult to follow a perfect vegan diet as prescribed as a vegan diet uh, and then hope that you know you will get all your requirements unless you're taking enough supplements or you're using fortified food which uh, for the last large majority uh, of indians is not really available easily so conceptually very interesting but there are challenges with following that and there are people again who those who follow vegan diets they swear by it and they will not change whatever you might do uh, but you know then we have to give them supplements to take care of of, of their deficiencies uh also about calcium sources you know calcium there are calcium sources and other uh, leafy vegetables and others but the absorption of calcium from many of these is not that great and again you know in, in the west again even the bread is fortified with calcium so you have to worry about those things overall dietary calcium intakes in india are still in the 400 mg per day zone whereas even the icmr recommends 600 mg so we we have to look at all those points but uh, i think it's a very nice way to understand about vegan diets uh there's another kind of diet and i go to shri pathakur for that and that's about you know this whole thing about uh reversing diabetes and you know doing very low calorie diets that professor roy taylor suggests so what are these very low calorie or very low carbohydrate diets and then i'll come to the you know diets which are recommended and then i'll go to shilpa joshi for that so very low calorie diet as you've been asking so the name suggested it is very low into calories it is as less than 800 kilo calories a day and these diets are normally used for the rapid weight loss as well as we have been having a study for the remission of diabetes too so the major lean body mass has been maintained by the high protein foods which have been included into the diet they may be a uh, milk based soya based or egg based which are included in the diet and carbohydrate are not more than 80 grams and fat is just 15 grams the care has to be taken about the micronutrients the multivitamins and the minerals they need to be uh, required to supplement with uh, uh, some potassium or adequate fluid intake also that has to be taken care of recently as you have uh, been sharing there has been a study for the remission of the diabetes also and uh, majorly it was a success but for a very small period of time there were um, i think uh, more than 40% of the study part- uh, participants they have achieved the remission of diabetes into it there were certain prerequisites for uh, into the study they have included the people who were not on medication and they were uh, people who are pre diabetic obese which were there and they were able to achieve the weight loss also control on the diabetes and the fatty liver also been reduced and dropout rate was also very less into that but it was a very short term intervention and it has it has been under the guidance but if we talk about uh, sustainability of this or the compliance the so long term studies are still not available so cannot comment on to those but they are normally been these uh, very low calorie diets they have been associated with cholelithiasis ketosis and increase in the serum uric acid also so long term safety data is been still been a uh, kind of a questionable into this and yet to be established for very low calorie diet so so thank you shilpa you know very low calorie diets basically means that we are having really low calories maybe 800 calories for example so the diabetes remission studies used only 800 calories so when people come and say i am willing to go on any diet but i want remission of my diabetes and there is so much data and in england people are doing it in america why don't you guys advise us that and you tell them oh okay let's do that 800 calorie diet is a very very hard diet to sustain on a daily basis in, in pre- incredibly hard i mean it's not something that everyone can do and as as uh, as ashilpa thakur pointed out it has to be done under supervision and it can only be done for some period of time although the results are from at least one group are fantastic in terms of remission of diabetes and even sustainability of the remission even after you've gone back yes, to a maintenance yes. diet so for a few weeks if you can do that it does help a lot but don't do it again randomly it's a difficult diet it's a difficult diet and it it can have potential lead to potential deficiencies yes rithika please 
So I'd just like to add over here, as we rightly said, because it's a very, very restricted calorie restricted diet, it's a uh, next to impossible to follow a very low calorie diet by just eating natural fruits and vegetables. So what we usually do in a low, low calorie diet is we use something which are called the meal replacers. So it can depend upon what extreme you want to go on. So we have the VLCD, the LCD diets where we use one meal replacer or two meal replacer or all the three re meal replacers. And that is one thing which is very, very popular in the West because they just eat fruits and vegetables in between their meals. And their meal consists of a meal replacer, which is usually about 200 to 250 calories, giving you adequate proteins and fiber so that the satiety level is maintained. And hence, we are able to maintain that 800 to 1000 kilocalorie diet. So that's very, very important for the public to understand that when they want, a lot of patients come to us that they want to follow this VLCD diet. And then when we tell them that you'll have to get into this so-called meal replacer and it's a shake, you have to take that that's when they take a backseat. But it's next to impossible to follow a VLCD diet by eating your natural roti dal sabzi. So it's not possible. Right? So, so so I would also like Ritika, to add over here. Yeah, so. Yeah. so these very low calorie diet has been uh, shared by Ritika. We have been actually using it for our international patients before bariatric also as a pre-bariatric diet. She would agree with me as we've been following it. That, then the meal replacers actually play an important role over here because the pre-shedding of the weight before the, uh, the surgery Thanks actually is very, very beneficial. Yes. So uh, this, these kinds of diet following uh, maybe a couple of weeks before the surgery actually helps the patient also out and the surgeon also for the surgery. So meal replacers over here with very low calorie diet plays a very important role. So I'm glad both of you got this point out. Uh, to follow such a low calorie diet, and that's what the studies all did. I was hesitating to point that out, but they 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 actually use meal replacement. Yes. You know, so there's a proper mix that you get, which is so you have to think. I mean, I think very low calorie diets will be a challenge for most of us. If I had to do it, I wouldn't. I couldn't do it. I would have said no. Why? Okay. So so uh, you know, we talked about all kinds of diets now. Uh, Shilpa Joshi, there must be some diets that are very good, you know, which have been shown in nature through centuries, through to where people who consume those kind of diets are the healthiest and they live the longest. And when you look at literature, the one diet that keeps popping up is the Mediterranean diet. Shilpa, you want to enlighten us about that? Mediterranean diet is the diet which is followed by people who live around the Mediterranean Sea. So Spain, Greece, and all those countries which, uh, which, which are around Mediterranean uh, Sea. The important part of that diet is that diet is not low in fat. That is the interesting part. So about 40% or calories come from fat, primarily from olive oil. Um, and then about 20% uh, calories come from protein and others come from low glycemic index carbohydrates. Um, here, there is a lot of emphasis on eating whole pulses, whole grains, fruit and vegetable, and a lot of emphasis on nuts and oil seeds uh, to be consumed. There is a very large trial, which went on for about five years, which is called as the PREDIMED study, which actually studied Mediterranean diet for prevention of cardiovascular disease. And what they did is, in this diet, they supplemented 40% calories coming either from extra virgin olive oil or from nuts. And they found that both groups, as compared to people consuming low-fat diets, had better, I mean, their CV outcomes, the cardiovascular outcomes were far better. And that is why these diets have become very popular because uh, they sort of match what people eat normally. We have been speaking about diets which are eliminating a food group. So at a point we are saying, don't eat fat. When, when, when I was a student, fat was a bad word. Yes. Now carb is a bad word. So, you know, we don't have any bad words. In that diet, you eat everything, but you eat in moderation. And very, very important is you eat what is close to nature. So I think this is very similar to the Satvic diets, which were very popular, yes. which probably our, grand, our grandparents ate. You know, normal ghar ka sada khana with vegetables, which are seasonal, local, fresh. Locally grown. Locally and grown diverse. Vegetables. Yes, and diverse. Diverse Absolutely. is important. Ritika and Shilpa both will agree with me, and you will also, sir. Patients ko puchte ki sabzi kya khate hai? Bindi, alu, gobi. It's done. Pa patte wali sabzi kya khate hai? Palak, methi. It's done. There is not a third thing they are even aware of. So I think it's very important, and I think that's a sense of any 
good diet is a lot of diversity. So more diverse you eat, more local you eat, I think you have better health. And I think that's the essence of Mediterranean diet. Besides that, um, a very non-nutritional or non-medical thing, but Mediterranean diet emphasizes on family eating. I think that is something important because when you eat alone, you overeat because you see TV and eating. When you eat as a family, everybody eats good food. You cook good food. So there is a lot of emphasis on sitting together, eating. And um, so these things are actually, this diet has stood the test of time probably since we know, I mean, since the Romans existed. Fantastic uh, information. And, you know, another diet which is very healthy, but we won't discuss it today, is a Japanese diet. Uh, we're, we're remarkably healthy. And again, that does emphasize eating together and mindful eating, eating slowly. There's, you know, in Japan, in schools, during your recess, you cannot go out to play. You have to have your lunch over 25, 30 minutes. You cannot, even children. So they are trained like that. And eating slowly, eating with the family makes sure that the right thing goes in and you don't stuff yourself quickly without realizing and so, also, sir, in Japanese food, portion sizes are very yes, small. Yes, very small. Then we go to oh. Japanese restaurants in India also. Half the time you come back home hungry. And I think <laughs> that's, that's something which is great because portion mm. control, like yes. you said, mindfulness. Yes. And portion control is essence of any diet. Yes. I mean, you talk about any diet across yes. the world. Everybody's talking about eating smaller bites. So uh, uh, one question, quick question to Ritika and a quick answer. Uh, there are lots of stuff about traditional Indian diets. Uh, I always have an issue about that. I don't even know what is a traditional Indian diet. It varies every 100 kilometers. It changes. Uh, which tradition are we talking about 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago? Uh, what did the Indus Valley civilization they ate? I mean, tradition in India is a long thing. And the vegetables we often talk about and like so much came here only when the Portuguese came. During Mughal times, they weren't even there. Are commonly used as Some of the commonly used vegetables. So, so if someone asks you traditional Indian diet, what would you say, Ritika? Yeah, so again, as rightly said, India is a very diverse country and each state, when you move from one state to the other, the diet completely changes. So simple example, you know, sitting in North in my yeah. clinic in Delhi, somebody tells me, you know, ragi is very good. I talk to my patients about ragi, they've not even heard about ragi. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. something which is very, very expensive. They'll have to go to a, a mall to buy that and then have it. But going down south, it was an indigenous food locally yeah. available. So what we basically mean when we talk about traditional Indian food is wherever you are, and as been pointed out earlier also, local, seasonal and diverse food is something which is very, very important. Even things like moringas and all. It's been growing in our backyard. We've never known about it. Yeah. So you just need to pluck those leaves and eat it and not have it like a powder, which is now sold in the malls. So it's just the basics that whichever region you are. So again, a North Indian diet would be very different from a person coming from Maharashtra or a person coming from the South because they are more of rice eater. And the same person, a North Indian, you tell him to have too much of rice, he'll probably gain weight because that is not his traditional food. So each region has its own traditional locally available growth, uh, food. And if you eat that, I think that is what we are basically talking about when we talk about eating traditionally good, healthy foods. So the point I'd like to make here is that even when we use foods that our parents or grandparents have used, the same principles apply. The principles of nutrition that we have discussed through this program, having higher fiber, less refined carbohydrate, so many things. Those things don't change. So it's important to remember that because sometimes it is possible that in our family, there were unhealthy eating practices. You know, it's not necessary that we always had. So we need to confirm that with, again, you have to, if you are confused about your diet, follow some basic principles. If you have a specific disease or a specific goal, go to the nutritionist, certified nutritionist, educator, dietitian and learn about what is good for you, good for your body, good for your phenotype, good for your health. I think it is necessary to know that everyone doesn't suit one thing. School doesn't suit us. So, if it doesn't suit us, it's not that 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 उनकी फिजिकल एक्टिविटी क्या थी हो सकता है वो गांव में रहते हो आप यहां से भागते भागते जाते हैं ऑफिस पूरे टाइम आप बैठे रहते हैं रात को 11 बजे खाना खाते हैं तो देयर इज अ चेंज 
So you do need nutrition advice. And I strongly recommend if you're confused or not sure, please uh, go for that. Otherwise, follow the basic principles we have said, which means reduce refined carbohydrate, increase your fiber, overall increase in proteins and healthy proteins, increase healthy fats. The biggest mistake that the Western world did when they reduced, when they reduced fats in the diet was in the 80s, uh, they replaced it with uh, carbohydrate. And that was a disaster. Uh, fats had to be replaced by good fats. Carbs have to be replaced by good carbs, meaning high fiber carbs. That's the basic principle. Every, every uh, you know, food constituent has a role in this. And the last word on this I'll give to Shilpa Joshi. What is an ideal plate? What should it look like? Not everyone is going to go to a nutritionist. A healthy person won't really worry. What should a, pe what should a person have? Uh, the plate uh, that would work for most people. So um, the my plate concept is a very nice concept which can be you know very easily uh, spoken to our patients about. So in a plate you divide it into four parts: a fourth with raw vegetables, a, raw, a fourth with cooked vegetable, a fourth with protein, and a fourth with a carbohydrate-rich source. It can be rice, roti, millets, and potato is not a vegetable. Potato is a carbohydrate. <laughs> So because, uh, you know, people eat aloo ki sabzi and roti thinking that they have eaten a sabzi, still a starch. And I think very important, I, this is what I tell my patients and I would like to share. I always say when you sit to eat anything, first ask a million dollar question, where is the protein? And if you can't find protein, you have no business eating food. That is just a simple thing. So because breakfast hota hai, Maharashtra mein poha, upma, there is no uh, there is uh, there is no protein in north. Same. There is a paratha. There is no protein. So I think that as long as you can find protein in what you are eating, uh, decrease the portion size, and that's that's an easy way to sort of balance your food. Uh, fantastic. I think uh, I'll add a bit of fruit to the vegetables. You forgot. I mean, you know, yeah. when you add vegetables, there has to be some fruit some also. Fruit. But I think the concept is very simply explained, and uh, uh, I think we overshot our time. And uh, thank all of you for joining in and providing such valuable information to our viewers. Aapko bahut jankari mili aaj diet ke baare mein aur hume umeed hai ki aapka isse kuch laab hoga, kuch fayda hoga. Aap apni sehat ka aur khyal karenge, swast aapka achcha rehega aur hum diet pe aapke saath aur programs bhi karenge. Thank you very much.